بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, We will start with a new surah سورة الانشراح uh, It is a Meccan surah uh, according to the consensus of the scholars it was revealed after al-duha which we finished in the previous session and after uh, and before surah al-asr uh, scholars of tafsir uh, reported three different names for the surah al-inshirah al-sharh and alam nashrah based on uh, different narrations as for the reason of revelation, there is no uh, reason uh, of revelation, authentic reason of revelation uh, reported for this surah. Now this surah, uh, when, you, when we start reading it now, you feel it is as if it's a continuation of surah uh, al-duha, right? Uh, it's again full of love. Uh, Allah addressing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam conveying his love to him alayhi, alayhi salatu wa salam uh, and showing how Allah azza wa jal uh, cared for him and supported him alayhi salatu wa salam Alam nashrah laka sadrak Now remember he was grieved alayhi salatu wa salam in surah duha he was grieved right Allah azza wa jal told him what he told him in Surah Al-Duha. And then here, Allah Azza wa is asking him, did we not expand for you, O Muhammad, your breast or your heart? Did we not put your mind to ease? Did we not support you? Did we not take care of you as we told you we would? Alam nashrah laka sadrak. Did we not enlighten your heart? And this is a means of expanding the, the heart. Enlighten it by what? By means of guidance, by the light of Quran, by reassurance, by facilitating your mission, by helping you throughout. Alam nashrah laka sadrak. Now, some of the scholars said the introduction to this surah reflects that the Prophet ﷺ was overburdened, was saddened about something pertaining to da'wah, to the mission itself, right? And the obstacles the, the kuffar used to place uh, in its path, uh, namely belying him, opposing him, rejecting his mission, torturing uh, and persecuting his, his followers, and so on and so forth, right? And he felt burdened alayhi salatu wassalam and he was in need of more support and provision so Allah azza wa addressed him alayhi salatu wassalam alam nashrah laka sadrak wa wada'na anka wizrak and we removed from you your burden the anxiety that you were feeling that you experienced at the beginning of the mission you were feeling all this overwhelming feeling of sadness as a result of the reaction of people to you. Which had weighed heavily upon your back. It was so heavy that it almost broke your back. Allah is telling him, all of this was so heavy. It was a burden. You felt very heavy carrying this mission, but we made it easy. We facilitated. We broadened your heart and your chest. We reassured you with our support, with the revelations sent down to you by Jibreel or through Jibreel. And exalted and raised high for you your repute now muhammad's name alayhi salatu wassalam 
was raised lofty and exalted both in the heavens amongst the angels and on earth. It's enough honor and glory for him alayhi salatu wasalam, that his name is coupled with Allah in the testimony of faith. His name is mentioned whenever Allah Azza wa is mentioned in Salah, in, 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 in Adhan, and at the end of the Salah in at tahiyyat right? This is enough honor. This is enough to show that he raised his rank. This is enough proof that he exalted his mention, alayhi salatu wasalam. It is enough that he chose him from amongst all human beings to be the messenger. That's another way of exalting and raising his rank. Alayhi salatu wasalam. It is enough that he, alayhi salatu wasalam, whenever his name is mentioned, Allah legislated that we exalt his mention and ask Allah Azzawajal to exalt his mention. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. How many billions of people throughout the time and up until the day of judgment will continue to exalt the mention of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Isn't this reason and exalting someone's rank? Indeed it is. So it is as if to say here, after all this, don't feel burdened because Comparing this to the responsibility you're shouldering and how heavy it is and tiring both physically and emotionally and mentally, what you got in return is by far high. And this is again not to say that he was thinking otherwise, alayhi salatu wasalam, right? But this is a way of motivating someone. That someone does not necessarily have to think negative for me to come and motivate him, right? I can initiate motivation to, to help him carry out. And it doesn't always mean that someone is negative or feeling negative. So I come and try to make him think in a positive way. وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرًا the translation here, for indeed with every hardship will be ease and relief. Again, indeed with every hardship there will be ease and relief. Now, Allah is putting his mind to peace and his heart to peace and ease, alayhi salatu wasalam, telling him that ease and relief, facilitation is going to be around you and surrounding you before and after and during. You know, in, in the Arabic language, the definitive al, al uh, when it is used, it means the same thing, even if it's repeated more than, than, than one time. However, the word yusr, which, which is uh, after al-usr, yusran, the, the word is yusr, which is ease and facilitation and relief, it does not have the definitive al, the, right? It is called nakira in, in Arabic. And this, in, in the Arabic language, means that each one of them is different than the one before. If it has a definitive al, right, then it's the same thing. But without it, then every one is different than the other. So one hardship will have multiple reliefs and eases from Allah Azza wa Jal. Subhanallah, Ibn, Ibn Al-Qayyim, uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, Never will a single hardship be able to overtake two sources of ease and facilitation and relief. Yani Allah Azza wa Jal 
is telling Muhammad وسلم, that different types of relief will come to you whenever you face even a single difficulty and hardship. Uh, Ibn Rajib commenting on this verse said, when, when one is afflicted with a difficulty and it becomes so uh, heavy on him and he loses hope in any human being able to help or support or relieve him from this, his heart directly turns to Allah, devoting his reliance and trust on and in him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that he is the only one that has the different sources of yusr, of relief and ease. And then Allah Azza wa Jal uh, explains to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the provision he needs to have in order for him to continue his mission and to get this relief happening. فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرَغَبْ So when you have finished, when you have fulfilled your duties, then فَانْصَبْ Insab means stand up in, in Arabic. But the meaning here is stand up for worship. You know, Qiyamul Layl was made mandatory upon Muhammad because it's a means of support. It gives you an amazing, it's an amazing source of moral support. And it's a connection. You never feel disconnected. You never feel out of touch. If you're blessed with Qiyam al -Layl. So Allah is telling Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you finished your duties, your responsibility, go and get provision for the rest of the journey. Stand up in worship for your Lord. وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ and to your Lord, direct your, Lord, uh, your uh, longing and your eagerness. Uh, Ibn Juraj passed by a group of people who were playing, entertaining themselves. He said, uh, what are you doing? They said, we're playing. He said, why? He said, they said, we finished. Faragna. We finished from our responsibilities. One was in the farm, was, was in the garden, one was in his job, one was doing this and one was doing that. One was shopping, one was, right? We finished. So he said, did Allah say, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَالْعَبْ When you finish, go and play. Or did he say, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ Devote yourself in worship to Allah Azza wa Jal. See, the source of this heedlessness of the meaning of this verse comes from our heedlessness of our objective. When we are not mindful of the reason of our existence, when we do not glorify Allah Azza wa Jal as He should be glorified, when we are heedless of the sins that we have, then it justifies and explains why you see many people, even practicing people, playing games on their phones, wasting time on the internet, doing this and doing that, for long and long hours. This is not to say that entertaining yourself every once in a while to release some of the pressure and stress of this worldly life is haram. 
but what I am saying is that when this becomes the theme of our life and worship is only for those who do and worship is only limited to Ramadan when it comes to the five daily prayers if they pray them in the masjid and then after that you ask them how much of the Quran do you recite today? How much dhikr do you, do you recite? Uh, are you doing this? Are you doing that? Um, no. Why? Why is it that we find time to do almost every other thing, but when it comes to becoming near, drawing near to Allah Azza wa Jal, we find this so burdening, so heavy. Why? Because there is a disconnection between the heart and Allah. We're not connected. We're out of touch. فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ Devote yourself. When you have time, utilize it. Take advantage of this time. When you're healthy, take advantage of this health. اِغْتَنِمْ خَمْسًا قَبْنَ خَمْسًا Take advantage of five before other five things happen. Time, health, youth, wealth, and life before death. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant us a good end. Allahumma ameen. With this we conclude Surah uh, Al-Inshirah. Subhanakallahum bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk.